Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in for this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be exploring a historic luxury hotel located off of Union Avenue out of Memphis, Tennessee, that's as famous for its fine accommodations as it is for its set of five mallard ducks who share its namesake, who reside on its rooftop, and whom frolic directly through the lobby each day. Rumored to harbor the spirits of countless guests who never really checked out, are you sure you're ready to brave the history and hauntings of the Peabody Memphis? Historically, in 1869, the original Peabody Hotel would open its doors off the corner of Main and Monroe Streets and under the ownership of Robert Campbell Brinkley, who would name his establishment in honor of his recently deceased friend and Southern legend George Peabody. Initially, the hotel was a smashing success, and not long after its opening, Robert would actually gift the site to his daughter, Anna Overton Brinkley, and her husband, Robert B. Snowden. Among the Peabody's most notable guests were figures such as Generals Robert E. Lee and Nathan Bedford Forrest, and former Confederate President Jefferson Davis, who actually resided on site while working as president of a local insurance company. In 1923, the Peabody would close its doors as it prepared to transfer its operation a block away. A month later, construction of a new Peabody Hotel was started at its current site, and on September 1st of 1925, our modern, or at least now similar, my modern Peabody would open its doors. As mentioned earlier, the Peabody is easily best known for its custom that was started way back in 1933, when then-general manager Frank Shute and friends who'd just returned from a hunting trip to Arkansas decided it would be good fun to leave three live English call ducks in the hotel's lobby fountain as a gimmick. Incidentally, guests love the ducks, and from the time of their introduction, the hotel has maintained a, well, I guess we'd say staff of five mallards, consisting of one drake and four hens who play in the fountain daily. In 1953, the Peabody was sold to the Alcinet Hotel Group. However, by the 1960s, these new owners would fall deeply into debt, and by 1965 would file for bankruptcy, after which the site was sold at foreclosure to Sheraton Hotels, and would be re-established as the Sheraton Peabody Hotel instead. Through the 1970s, various portions of downtown Memphis would begin to decay, during which time the Sheraton Peabody would suffer greatly, resulting in its closure in 1973, and in it remaining dormant until 1975 when it was purchased by Jack A. Bells, who spent years renovating and breathing life back into its bones. In 1981, the Peabody would hold a grand reopening, which to this day is considered by many a major stoking point for the fiery revitalization of the whole of the downtown strip, which literally actually continues to this very day. In the present, the Peabody Memphis remains in operation, offering 464 guest rooms and suites, a heated indoor pool, a gallery of shops, an athletic club and spa, multiple in-house dining and drink options, and so much more. Rather classically, the whole of hotel grounds have long been surrounded in a range of ghost stories and tales of encounters with the unknown, with standing legends claiming the spirits of former staff, patrons, owners, and even the restless souls of several victims of suicide linger. And those who have frequented its bounds have reported extreme cold spots felt moving around temperature-controlled rooms, shadowy figures sighted moving eerily across the walls, and run-ins with a range of full-bodied apparitions in attire spanning the ages. To elaborate on an earlier mention, just before the opening of the original Peabody, Colonel Brinkley, who'd initially planned to name his lodging after, well, himself, would receive tragic word of the death of his dear friend, resulting in the establishment's last-minute name change. While it's literally impossible for a living George Peabody to have ever known Brinkley would have honored him in such a way, many claim they've encountered his spirit, as if his very soul made the discovery in the afterlife and decided to hang around for a bit. The Phantom of Peabody, who is distinguishable as an older gent in period clothing with white mutton chops, is often spied admiring the ducks and has even been mistaken for a duck master. And before you even ask, yes, that is a job. And no, we highly doubt there are any openings. Several informal investigations of the Peabody Memphis have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and orbs and strange silhouettes in the backgrounds of photography and video. Many describe feeling as if they're being followed or watched by someone or something constantly, and objects have been sighted moving about on their own or even floating in midair. 
On a closing note, the 11th floor of this weathered lodging is claimed to be a hot spot for the otherworldly, and those who have stayed overnight there have later told of whispers that emanate from thin air, of icy chills, of strange noises heard from within the walls and from within vacant rooms, and of ghoulish specters that drift about the halls after dark. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. Pleasant dreams.